A credible witness of a robbery incident saw a man who allegedly robbed the residents of Ramos' family. Which of the following is the most helpful part of witness testimony to identify the suspect? The man has a gun. The man has a big scar on his forehead. The man is wearing red cap. He was climbing the gate. The man ran north of the Time Street. The most helpful part of the witness testimony to identify the suspect is, the man has a big scar on his forehead. This detail is specific and distinctive, making it more likely to uniquely identify the suspect compared to the other details, which could apply to many people or be easily changed. Police Officer 2 Christina Perea heard a report of kidnapping on a nearby area from her radio. What information does PO2 Perea need in order to find the fleeing vehicle and call for hot pursuit? She also owns a white Toyota Alfred with plate number ASA1234 which was used to flee from the crime scene. She is set to run as a Barangi captain on the upcoming Barangi elections. The victim owns a villa in Safeca subdivision where she was abducted. The name of the victim is Mrs. Curry Pot, age 56 and a businesswoman. The information PO2 Christina Perea needs in order to find the fleeing vehicle and call for hot pursuit is, she also owns a white Toyota Alfred with plate number ASA1234 which was used to flee from the crime scene. This detail provides a specific description of the vehicle involved in the kidnapping, which is crucial for initiating an effective hot pursuit. Officer Carlo was patrolling along Capitol Drive which is one of the hottest spots in snatching and robbery holdups. Apparently, a student from BPSU called the attention of Officer Carlo because of a snatching incident in the corner of Capitol Drive and Canadawan Avenue. Which situation shall Officer Carlo investigate? A tattooed man selling cigarettes along the street. An old woman who was crossing the south of Canadawan Avenue with her pet dog. A child facing the north of Capitol Drive who is hysterically crying due to the dog barking uncontrollably towards him. A tricycle along Capitol Drive without tires and detached from its sidecar. A man walking towards east of Capitol Drive and has a woman's purse. A man walking towards east of Capitol Drive and has a woman's purse. This situation directly relates to a potential suspect in the snatching incident, as the man has a woman's purse which could have been stolen. While assigned as members of a CDM contingent, you and your buddy were hurled invective slash insulting remarks by a group of demonstrators protesting for the passage of Bangsamoro Organic Law. Angered by the insults, you began to indiscriminately strike demonstrators with truncheons hitting them in the different parts of their bodies. Your action as police officers was wrong. You used excessive force in a situation that does not yet require the use of necessary force. Wrong. You should have first strongly warned the demonstrators before using the necessary force option. Right. Your inaction in this situation will embolden others to hurl similar insulting remarks. Right. The invective slash insulting remarks against your persons constitute unlawful aggression. Your action as police officers was wrong. You used excessive force in a situation that does not yet require the use of necessary force. Using force in response to insulting remarks is excessive and not justified. Law enforcement officers are trained to handle verbal insults and maintain composure, using force only when it is necessary and proportionate to the threat faced. The shabu trade is believed to be rampant in a certain university along Capitol Drive. An informer told Officer Decker and Officer Dan that a transaction will take place around the school vicinity. Which situation shall the officers investigate? Shouting students due to basketball championship game along Capitol Drive. A drunk female college student buying a cigarette in front of the school. A group of students playing a card game without any money beside them. Two male students in uniform talking and exchanging stuff at the back of a carinderia.
The officers should investigate. Two male students in uniform talking and exchanging stuff at the back of a carinderia. This situation aligns with the informer's tip about a transaction taking place around the school vicinity and suggests a potential exchange that could be related to the Shabu trade. Ms. Jane Doe, also known as Anaconda, age 50, is an alleged swindler. She is known as a notorious leader of a syndicate who deceive their victims in order to get money from them as payments for fake transactions. Officer Chris was tasked to find forged documents in the suspect's retrieved stuff. Which of the following stuff might be presented as evidence? Pictures of random people and one pack of cigarette. A driver's license with name and image of the suspect and date of birth September 29, 1980. Total amount of 30,000 pesos in cash inside the suspect's pouch. A 0.45 caliber black Glock pistol with a duly registered license. A wallet with variety of credit cards under Ms. Jane Doe's name. A driver's license with name and image of the suspect and date of birth September 29th. 1980 inch could be presented as evidence if the information on the driver's license is found to be forged or used fraudulently. This would be particularly relevant if the suspect is known to use false identification in her swindling operations. When you were on a traffic duty, you saw an old woman crossing the street and pressing her hand on her chest and crying out in pain. You suspect that she is having a cardiac arrest. The wisest course of action you should do is... Lie her down flat on the street while you call for an EMT. Call a taxi cab to take her to the nearest hospital for immediate treatment. Ask her for the name of her doctor so that you can summon him. Help her cross the street in order to prevent her from being hit by moving vehicles. The wisest course of action you should do is help her cross the street in order to prevent her from being hit by moving vehicles. After ensuring her safety by moving her out of the street, you should immediately call for emergency medical services, EMT, to provide professional medical assistance. While out of duty, Officer Ted accidentally passed by a scene of an accident involving a tricycle and a Jeep with plate number ATA-123. He witnessed the Jeep fleeing from the scene which is the best information that Officer Ted shall include in his report. None of these. A Jeep with plate number ATA-123 hit the tricycle after he fled from the scene of the accident. A Jeep with plate number ATA-123 left the scene of an accident involving a tricycle. A tricycle hit a Jeep with a plate number ATA-123. A tricycle was driving when it was suddenly hit by a Jeep with plate number ATA-123. The best information that Officer Ted shall include in his report is, a Jeep with plate number ATA-123 left the scene of an accident involving a tricycle. This statement accurately describes what Officer Ted witnessed and provides important information about the fleeing vehicle, which could assist in identifying and apprehending the driver involved in the hit-and-run accident. An off-duty policeman was buying groceries at the convenience store when two men suddenly barged inside with guns drawn and at gunpoint, robbed the cashier. Although armed with his issued service firearm, the police office made no attempt to stop the robbery or to prevent the criminals from escaping with their loot. Later, he justified his inaction by stating that an officer, when off-duty, is a private citizen and therefore, he is not obliged to respond in such a situation. The officer's conduct was, right? It would be suicidal to intervene as he was outnumbered by the armed robbers. Wrong. He should have carefully noted the description of the suspects and asked for backup. Right. It is none of his business to intervene as the crime occurred outside his jurisdiction and while he was off duty. Wrong. A police officer must act to prevent crimes and apprehend criminals at all times. The officer's conduct was wrong. A police officer must act to prevent crimes and apprehend criminals at all times. 
Regardless of whether an officer is on or off duty, they have a responsibility to uphold the law and protect the public to the best of their ability. In this scenario, the officer had the means to potentially intervene and prevent the crime, so not taking action could be seen as a failure to fulfill their duty. Shop owners in the Vesta Mall are upset by a recent rash of purse snatchings in their parking lot. Officer Decker is closely patrolling the mall area, including the vacant lot behind the stores. Which situation below would Officer Decker most likely investigate? A man running through the vacant lot with a bulky object under his sweatshirt. A car at the mall parking lot with four flat tires and a broken windshield. A woman's voice raised in anger at the mall parking lot. A vendor selling cigarette in the vacant lot. Officer Decker would most likely investigate. A man running through the vacant lot with a bulky object under his sweatshirt. This situation is suspicious and could be directly related to the recent purse snatchings, as it involves someone possibly trying to hide stolen items and fleeing the scene. 